so our next step will be to create 3D plants using the MoGraph Cloner object. So go into your MoGraph tab and uh, create a cloner object. What we'll do is uh, select all your pieces and we'll drag those to be a child of the cloner. So now select your cloner and change our mode from linear to radial. Right now it's sort of radialing as a like a little dude, a little weird guy. But we will change it from the XY axis to the XZ. And now we're sort of all our plants are growing vertical and we're starting to get a shape that we want. What we want to do is lower our radius down. Depending on how many pieces you want, we'll have a bigger radius or a smaller radius. It's usually around like 5 to like sometimes 20. It depends on, on the plants you're making everything. For these guys, I'll usually keep around the 10 to 20. So now we're getting a start of our plant. What we want to do is change our clones from iterate to random. And this will randomly grab one of these, one of our plant pieces and assign it into our cloner. If you want to change that, what you can do is change our seed. And you'll see that it starts randomly grabbing uh, five of each of our plants. And so you can like cycle through those and start to get a whole bunch of different plant shapes. What I like to do next is go into MoGraph with cloners with your cloner selected. Go into MoGraph, Effector, and Random. And this will automatically assign our random node to our cloner object. So now with uh, the random enabled, by default our position is on. I usually have these things at a very low value, like maybe 10. For the Y, I uh, always leave that at zero because we don't want pieces to come up and start floating or we don't want them to be crashing into the ground. So we can vary those up a little bit, like maybe 10 on each side. Uh, turn on your scale, uh, check uniform scale so we don't get skewed sort of scalings on our plant pieces. And I'll usually go about 25%, 0 0.25. We'll also turn on our rotation. And what I usually do is go 360, so each piece gets randomly assigned a 360 degree value on each uh, cloner point. And then for the other two rotation axis, I'll usually do around 15 to 20, depends on the plant. And this will sort of give our plants the ability to tilt outwards and stuff on our plant. So this one's kind of looking a little awkward. So what we can do now that we have our uh, plant set up, we can play with the, uh, the values to create a nice looking plant. So what we'll be doing is we'll play with our count, our seed for the cloner, and our seed for the randomizer. I'll usually start with the cloner stuff first because I definitely want more than five in this bush, I feel like. Maybe something like that. Let's sort of change your seat a bit. I kind of like that. That one looks nice and natural. And if you want, you can go up into our randomizer and you can play with the seed of this. And we have the same plant pieces, but the randomized seed is uh, randomizing our rotation and our scale and our position points to give it a to give them different looks. Let me just find one here that looks decent. There we go. I like this piece. I might be a little bit too dense in here we're getting like a lot of crashing some crashing is okay but we don't want it to be so 
so dense in there that you can't really it doesn't really give it a good feel especially when we use octane scatter to disperse it so we can just lower this down a bit there we go so now we sort of have our first little bush what you want to do is I actually went ahead and I already did that just because it's uh, I do it so much and it just happened to do it without even noticing um, but we'll We'll select our cloner random and we'll control or alt G that and to create a null and this will be so we can duplicate it. So grab your null and control drag out and this will create another little plant system. So each one of these nulls is like its own little unique plant system. Each one of these is like its own little plant system and what happens now that our randomizer and our cloner are in the same group this randomizer this random node will only change this cloner so now that we have two plants you can uh, sort of make a second plant and it won't change anything in the first one even when we change our randomizer seed there now we have two sort of unique looking plants we'll try adding a couple more and maybe with this one we increase our radius a little bit just to get a little bit more spread there we go and you'll see how in both these plants we have a lot of tall pieces and you want to create like a whole bunch of like little bushes or smaller than these bushes what we can do is uh, duplicate it again go into our cloner turn off our cloner and you'll see that we have our row of plants but you only want to use these ones so what we can do is just sort of select all our big pieces and just delete them because we have those big pieces sort of saved in these cloners as well if you want to create more bigger plants so let's turn our cloner back on and you'll see now that we have a nice little short plant compared to the other ones let's just collapse that again let's lower our count and you can see now we have a nice little little bush Let's randomize your seed a little bit. There we go. So just keep doing that until you have like 10 to 15 bushes. So I've went ahead and made a whole bunch of bushes. And now that we have all our bushes created, our next step will be to scatter them across our scene. So I sort of went ahead and made a quick little scene with some hills and little valleys and stuff to create like shadows so we can get a good sense of what our foliage feels like in our scene. So what we'll do is we'll go into our octane the live viewer window and we'll go into the object drop down and create an octane scatter so now that we have our scatter system what we'll do is to select all our plant systems and uh, drag those into our octane scatter so now our octane scatter will be scattering all these plant systems across our scene. What's nice about the, the octane scatter is that we can scatter all our cloner tools and we don't have to drop these down into or merge these together into one object. We can actually keep these live so we can uh, make adjustments to them once we have a good idea of how they feel in our environment.
So to get these scattered, what we want to do is go into this object, uh, change distribution to surface so it randomly populates our scene rather than going on to one on each point. And right, you can see right now nothing's showing up. So what we want to do is find your plane that your your geo plane, your landscape, and we'll drag that onto our surface. And you'll see right away that we're getting all these random lines and points. Each one of these uh, different colored lines and black lines and stuff are plants. Right now you can see that they're evenly sort of distributed. And you can see that they're going with like the angle of the landscape and everything. What I like to do is to go into display for display type. I'll usually choose box and this will give like a better idea of like how big your plant is and sort of an idea of it. You can go to object, but you can see it really slows down your machine. So I tend to just keep it in box mode. I feel like this is a good, gives you a good idea. And if you want to see how it looks, you could just open up Octane and get a get a render of that there. So now that we have this created, let's just close that. Let's go into our distribution. And what we want to do is turn our normal vector down because we don't want our plants to be like hanging off the side at like 90 degrees or whatever. I usually like to keep it on a little bit, like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You can see how it gives a nice, nice little angle to it. Our next step will be to um, sort of create little clusters of them with our uh, scatter. So what we'll do is we'll go into the shader, we'll uh, create a noise, and this will create like a, C a default C4D noise. What we want to do is to layer two noises on top of each other to get the effect we want. So we'll click into this again and we'll create a layer. And you'll see now that we have one noise in our layer. And so we could go into the shader node and we'll create another noise and I'll create a noise on top of our first one. For the, for the one that's on top, we'll change it from normal mode to multiply and we'll keep it around like 60-70%. And what we'll do is we'll go into that in our noise tab, either in here or on this little guy. I like to use this little guy because it gives you a little thumbnail of what each noise looks like. Grab the cell noise. And this, spread, this noise is like little squares from white all through the grays all the way to blacks. And this will actually create a good variance in how the Octane Scatter System chooses what plant to spawn in each location. Because you can see if, they're, if it's all white, actually that's like all because it's might multiplied. So if those all black, you'll see that we have only like two colors that Octane is choosing from. The one thing that it does is it takes the white and black value and then randomly assigns one of our plants to that value. And what we want to do is to have a good variation from white to black on, on almost each point. So in the global scale, we'll drop this down to one. And you'll see now we're getting a nice variation of all our different pieces. So now we have our plant variation. What we want to do is to create the uh, clusters with it. And actually to do that, what we need to do is go into our scale and uh, check the link to distribution box. By default it'll sort of shrink everything down but once we go back into our noises we can fix that.
So go into our bottom noise. This this bottom noise will be sort of our cluster generation system. So for this, I usually like to use uh, blistered turbulence. It'll be our second noise. And I find this one has a good natural feel to it once we adjust it the way we want to. So for this one, what we want to do is crank our contrast to like 96, 95%. And you'll see we're going from white to black. And once we turned on our link to distribution, that tells uh, Octane Scatter where it's black. We don't want anything to spawn there. And that's what this noise will be controlling, where our plants spawn in the white and where our plants don't spawn, that'll be in the black. And so right now we're still getting a lot. So what we want to do is to raise our low clip. And you'll see as we do that, we're starting to create little islands in our noise. And right now our global scale is very low, so what we want to do is like bring it like way up to like a thousand percent, five hundred. Depends on how big your scene is. And you can see now we're starting to create little clusters of our plant. And sometimes this will need uh, adjusting. Let's see. Yeah, right now our count is very low, so we're only getting like a couple plants here and there. In some spots, we're probably not even getting any. So as you raise it up, you'll see that we're starting to get our clusters back in there. So let's go back into our bottom noise, and let's adjust this a little bit. You play with these parameters and sort of get an idea. You can see that there's a lot of black ones. That's actually okay because Octane Scatter, if you go into display, only the first four colors are sort of selected for like the first four plants and then every single other plant after that is black. So that will be okay if a lot of them are black. If you run into that. Let's actually raise this up a bit, maybe. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking here and there to get what you want out of it. Maybe a little bit less contrast. I think we're getting there now. Maybe it's when it turns all the way off. Yeah, you can see when it's turned all the way off, you can like tell we're getting all the same bush because it's like super flat. So when we add that noise back in, we're getting all the variation in back. You could play with the seed, sort of randomize it. I for actually forgot one step, and then I'll be adding a rotation randomness randomness to our uh, clusters. So with Octane Scatter, you can actually add effectors to that from the MoGraph. So let's create our random effector. This actually doesn't automatically sign, so we'll have to drag that into there and with black but in here make sure position is off because we don't want our position to change because that's where we sort of told it where to go through our scatter and sometimes if you adjust the position pieces will like go outwards and they'll be like floating because our landscape isn't flat so I'll just turn that off and scale we'll go to uniform scale again and I'll usually vary it up around 25%. So now we're getting nice big guys and some will be a little bit shorter, even though they're the exact same plant. 
and for our rotation we'll just rotate everything 360 degrees. So our next step is to create our actual octane material to assign to our system. So to do that we'll go into create shader C4D and we'll create a blend material. This is Octane's new new material sort of master and you'll see once you double click into that and go into node editor right now what we have is sort of a bunch of inputs and amounts. This is sort of like our Octane sort of layer material but everything is sort of collected into one node so you're not left with like a whole bunch of pieces of a single material. Everything is just inside this single one. So to use this we'll go into our mat one tab and add material and you can see that it creates a sub material. This one will be sort of our material with our transmission and we'll go and create a second material and this one will be adding the spec because you can't have a specular material with transmission you have to blend each piece together so you can go through and name each one let's name this one our our transmission and we'll name this one our spec and our main material we can you can name it to whichever sort of atlas you're using or whatever you want to call your plants for these ones I'll just call them the leafy greens leafy green weeds there we go. so for blending them together that's where these amounts come in and you see the mat one doesn't have an amount because you can't really blend with anything above it because it's the top one. And mat two, we actually have a little mix to blend in between the uh, the two materials. For plants and stuff, I found this keeping it at 0.5 was like perfect. I never really had to like sway one way or another anymore. So now that we have our sort of material set up, what we want to do is to select all our pieces, select all our images to go into plug into our material. So what I will select for these atlases, I'll usually like to grab our albedo, our normal map, our opacity map. And I think for the most part, that's pretty much it. If they're close to the camera, you can grab your roughness and glossiness. But you can see that it's mostly the same sort of value of gray. And actually, oh yeah, it'll be uh, roughness and spec. With the spec, you can see that there's virtually no difference in... Uh, the color so I'll usually just like find a sort of a darker gray that would be like 0.3 or 0.4 maybe probably closer to 0.3 and then a roughness see if you want to bring in your roughness that'll add some variation Let, we'll, what we'll do is we'll bring it now and then actually so we'll grab our roughness our albedo our normal map and our opacity and let's drag those into our node editor Let's just go into our shader so you can see what we're looking at. That's our roughness. That's our opacity map. That's our normal map. And that's our albedo. So right now what we're using is two speculars. What we want to do is to change their top one to our transmission able material. So we'll change this from our glossy to diffuse and you'll see it changes our options to be able to have one with transmission. So with these textures, this one is our albedo, we'll plug that into diffuse. 
onto both. Or roughness, we could plug. Actually, I don't really think this one really does too much. We could plug it into it just in case. Our roughness into there. And our spec for our speckler one will be a little bit lower because you could see our spec for this plant was fairly dark. For our roughness node, because it's black and white, we can save quite a bit of VRAM by changing its type to float. And this tells Octane to not change this to like RGB values. It sort of stores it into just the one value, like black and white. And that saves quite a bit of VRAM I found. I've saved like gigs, gigs of it just changing all my materials where I can to float. I was I was very surprised how much I was able to save from that. With the color ones, make sure you keep them into normal because otherwise it'll change them to a uh, black and white. For our normal map, we'll plug it into both. And our opacity or our alpha will plug into our opacity channels. So now our material is basically done, but when we send it to Octane, all our plants will have the same sort of green across them. And what I like to do is give our plants a little bit of variation. Like some will be, some will have a little bit more yellow hue, and some will have a little bit more green hue. And it just gives helps give our scene a nice variation in it. So to do this. What we'll do is to create a random color. Um, where is it? A mix and two color corrections. So what what we're what we're telling Octane to do is to grab a random value from white to black and to assign that random value from white to black to each instance of the plant in our octane scatter and then with that we'll tell it to either be like a more of a yellowish sort of like deader looking plant or a nice vibrant green looking plant so we'll plug those guys into texture one and two and we'll plug our uh, albedo into those and then let's plug that into our diffuse and diffuse. Oh yeah, I actually forgot a step. So what we want to do for our transmission is we'll create another color correction node. And this will plug into there. And we'll plug that into transmission. And for creating trans a quick transmission for like a plants and leaves and stuff what I'll usually do is to just crank the brightness up to 2 and that actually usually works really well for just giving a quick transmission feel to your plants for here what we want to do is to create a sort of a yellowy color and a greenish color. So let's actually shrink this down. Or actually let's assign let's assign our material to our octane scatter pieces. It would have been better to actually uh, go ahead and assign it to all these guys, but for now I'll just quickly delete all our shaders we're working on. Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's delete all those. And because our octane scatter is only scattering our one atlas, we can just drag our new octane material onto the scatter. So let's go into our live viewer. There we go. And let's resend it. Octane.
there now you can see that we're getting our little our plants and what we want to do is to have a variation of like yellow plants and the green plants so let's bring our node editor back let me try to grab this here There we go. Give us a little bit more room. So now what we can do is let's drop our hue a bit. And you can see as we lower that, we're starting to get a variation between the two different color correction nodes. For the, for the greener one, I usually like to darken it a little bit so bring the brightness down to like maybe 0.8 and then it once it's like a gray value it'll sort of be between and between these two there we go and that's pretty much our look for our plants you see that our transmission is working so that we're still getting like light seeping through our plants. You can see how there's like where our plants group up quite a bit, it gets little darker areas, but then some are a little bit brighter. If you want, if you feel like it's not absorbing a, enough of the light, you can go into our sort of transmission correction node. Then we can uh, adjust our brightness down until we have something that we feel looks good. If we were to turn this to zero, you can see that with no transmission, our plants feel very, very dull. Oops, 1.4ish. So let's actually do something like that with a little bit less transmission in it. You can see now we're getting Nice variation in our plants. Oops. And when you combine this, like do this process over to a whole bunch of different sort of atlases and different types of plants and stuff, you can create like nice filled landscapes. So f what I'll do actually is I'll turn off all these. Let's turn off the one we created. And you can see I had the same process to these penny royals. And then I did one for sort of dead plants. And this just helps give sort of like you don't want everything to be all lush and stuff unless that's the look you're going for but I like to have a lot of like sort of like dead plants those it shows that your environment has been lived in for a, like a long time especially when you combine it with like old like mossy logs and dead standing trees and stuff it just gives it like a nice aged look and I I also added some like purple plants just like a nice variation of all sorts of different plants of different sizes. With these red plants, you can see how they're, oops, you can see how they're like nice and short. I actually think I might increase how much they're scattering. Let's actually go up to 30,000. There you go, I feel like I like that better. Turn that one off. And then for the grass, for my grasses, I like to have a scatter for all my short grass. This will be like just a general coverage of everything. And then I'll have uh, another octane scatter 
that's using the same system as our atlas plants and that creates like our clusters of all our tall grass because you don't want the tall grass to be sort of just generally scattered across your scene that doesn't give it any unique look and you can see that when I turn on both my grass it gives it a nice sort of varied look where you have like some nice shadows built up where the grass edges are and so when you have everything all your sort of atlas plants and everything in a one scene you can see how you can get a lot of variety across your landscape and it gives it like a nice natural look and then once you add like your rocks or like your maybe your castle ruins or your trees or like a little pond and then what you can do is use a uh, vertex maps to tell your plants not to grow there at all that'll even give it a better look So for one last uh, tip, say you have like your material on your geometry, on your landscape, but you could see how like our material is huge and when we render it, oh, it's behind it again, and when you render it, it comes out huge in comparison to our little pieces but when you say you go and tile it more you can see how it's tiling all our noises with it right and now we're getting a whole bunch of like noises in the same spots and that just doesn't look natural at all and I found out a trick around this actually So to do this, what I like to do is to have the first node, and this node will actually drive how you want your C4D noises to be spawned on your, or to tile on your geometry. And what we'll do is we'll actually drag a second material. It can be the exact same. And now that we have our second material, we can go and change it you see now that it's being tiled like a whole bunch it doesn't affect our C4D noises at all and their second material will actually be the one that Octane renders so you can see how it's like tiled a whole bunch but our our noise is in the correct spots and when I send this to Octane it renders that second material in priority of the of their first material that our C4D noise is using. So that's just for for our mine materials, I usually just like leave it at cubic. Let's drop that to like 0.3 ish, that's usually pretty good. There we go. So now that we now we have our material scaled to the proper scale of our landscape and our C4D noise is properly distributed across our landscape as well. So with this process you can see that we're able to create very unique looking landscapes and it can be very powerful when you actually like build out your full landscape with like trees and all your pieces it just helps give it that more of a natural look more of a like full-on wilderness feel to it because you have like random plants growing everywhere and then if you do the same thing with your grasses like it helps your grasses go into grow into like little clusters and stuff and it just gives it that natural feel that's hard to achieve in 3D. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody for checking out uh, this tutorial. I hope 
some people learn something from it, a new technique or a quick tip or something. And I'd love any feedback if you have any for it. I got a bunch of feedback from my last video saying that the volume was too low, so I hope I was able to fix that for this one. I did a little bit more testing and I had uh, turned up the volume a little bit, so um, I was recording it and uh, hearing it back at 50%, so hopefully that works well for you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching it and uh, have a good day.